Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you tonight to talk about the third layer in my recovery. And hopefully you've seen the first two videos in the series. If not, please go back and watch them. The first layer in my onion of recovery, because I found that my recovery had layers. Once I worked through one layer and I thought I'd be finished, lo and behold, there was another one, and then another one, and another one. So I'm hoping I'm through all the layers, uh, but basically I didn't do each one individually. They were pretty much all done simultaneously or at different times each one would kind of come to the forefront during my recovery so again the first one was physical dealing with the underlying physical issues of chronic fatigue syndrome the second was creating boundaries around my recovery so that I could actually have definition around my, my recovery so I could progress and then the third one I want to talk about tonight is the mind-body connection and you know as I referred to it earlier I called it emotional work because that's really what a lot of it was for me and so what is mind-body work you know the way I see it we hear that buzzword all the time now and I see especially with CFS it's very applicable because if you're like me and you know after you've been through that crash phase and you get to the wired and tired phase your brain is going 90 to nothing but your body is is completely debilitated so it you know you're you're wired up here and yet your body's not you know really able to do much so it's a lot about bringing the brain and the mind and body together to work as a team to enhance our health and you know I've been reading this book called radical remission about this woman who studied over a thousand cases of people that recovered from cancer after either refusing chemo and radiation and surgery or after those treatments had failed them and what she found were uh, actually nine common denominators that these people had used to recover and it's interesting that seven of those nine were actually mind-body principles so I just want to read these to you because I think if, if cancer patients found these useful then I think surely as CFS sufferers that we can too one radically changing your diet two taking control of your health making empowering choices Three, following your intuition. Four, using herbs and supplements. Five, releasing suppressed emotions. Six, increasing positive emotions. Seven, embracing social support. Eight, deepening your spiritual connection. And nine, having strong reasons for living. Now, all of these are things that we as CFS sufferers can embrace and apply into our own lives, just like these cancer survivors did. So um, basically, though, tonight I want to share with you about my journey in emotional work and mind-body work through my recovery. And it started actually before the illness because I remember a time in my life where I was really suffering from back pain. And I had done everything that I could. You know, I went to the chiropractor, the acupuncturist, um, to my medical doctor to check what was going on, massage, exercise, stretching, was trying to do everything that I could, but it wouldn't resolve. And so finally, I just thought one day, I wonder if there's anything, you know, emotional that I'm holding on to that, you know, that needs to be addressed. And when I asked myself that, something came up. And so I pulled up my courage and I went and talked to the person that this issue had come, you know, had been about and some things that I needed to say and express. Nothing, you know, nasty or anything, but just that these were some things that I had observed and I felt it was my responsibility to let them know in a loving and gentle way and I just needed to speak it to them. And um, it was pretty intense, but once I did that, it resolved. And so, you know, I've always remembered that. So, so it was kind of interesting. Once I got, when I was hit with CFS years later, um, I remember thinking when my body wouldn't heal and I was having multiple strep throats and then the crushing fatigue and I didn't know what was going on and I was trying everything that I could medically to heal myself. I finally just thought, you know what, maybe I need to figure out if something's going on behind this. So I put myself into therapy. 
and it didn't work. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I'm not knocking therapy, but that wasn't the tools that I needed at the time. It was talk therapy, and I already had a lot of strep throats that were really painful and crushing fatigue. So just getting to the doctor's, you know, the uh, the therapist appointment was really a challenge, and it would always set me back. Um, so I kind of hung up that hat and wasn't able to pursue any more. But what I did start getting into after that was emotional freedom technique, which a lot of you are probably familiar with. Highly recommend you check out Brad Gates on YouTube if you've never done it or if you want to find someone to kind of walk you through some. And I'd be happy to do some YouTube videos on that if you guys would like that because um, I really used it a lot during a period in my recovery in dealing with coping with the debilitating nature of the illness. Feeling forsaken, feeling isolated, emotions that would come up um, about the illness. Um, using EFT, which is actually using pressure points on your body, uh, you know, as you talk through it. And a lot of it is about accepting your emotions, it's saying, this is how I feel. And I've always been a very positive-minded person, so I never really would acknowledge my emotions. I'd always say, oh, I shouldn't feel that way. Oh, if I'm feeling bad about something, I shouldn't feel that way. If I feel, you know, uncomfortable, so I shouldn't. You know, it was a lot of shooting on myself. And so um, this technique helped me acknowledge and accept my emotions and let them be. And as I did that, it, it brought a lot of calm to my nervous system. It allowed me to just accept that they were there and it actually helped them process and lift. Another couple of things that I did, and I've mentioned before, were guided meditations and guided hypnosis. And basically, this just helped my body get into a very calm state by calming down my mind and all those thoughts that were going, you know, buzzing around my head. But anyway, that it was just very useful for a period of time in my recovery. And then the main thing, the main, the thing that I see that's been the biggest help for me in my emotional and mind-body work in recovery is nickel therapy. And there's no way that I could go into everything that it helped me understand in this one video. So I'll probably do a lot of other videos about it. Um, but basically, some of the first things I learned were boundaries. Boundaries were huge for me, not just around my recovery, but about when to set boundaries in my life. So with boundaries, that was causing me to address a lot of people-pleasing patterns that I had, you know, basically just spending my life to being available to everyone else's agenda except for my own. And so uh, nickel therapy has helped me learn how to set boundaries, to uh, learn how to listen to my intuition. That's a, the most important part is um, your body is always speaking to you through your intuition. And I knew that on a big scale. Like I know you ever had something, you just really felt something in your gut, like, no, I don't need to do that, or that's not a good idea. Well, what's interesting is our body is constantly speaking to us about choices that we need to make. Uh, but we've kind of either that voice is not really loud, so we don't really hear it, or we're not paying attention to it. And the thing about it is what Mikkel explains is that if your emotions try to speak to you, but you're not listening, they start screaming to you in symptoms. And so Mikkel is a way to plug up those energy drains by listening to what your emotions are asking you to do. And that's another interesting concept that I never understood, is that emotions, not only are they a guide for us, but they're also a call to action. And I just want to talk about that for a minute, because as a person of faith and a Christian, I was raised to understand you don't trust in your feelings, and you don't rely on your feelings. And there is, you know, some, you know, truth to that, in that, uh, as Mikkel talks about, we have two types of emotions that are generated. Primary emotions, which come from our gut, or the second is thinking your thinking brain emotions, and that's like, those can really get you off track. That's when you're overthinking about something, and your brain goes off, and you're thinking, thinking, and you're creating anxiety, or fear, or any other kind of emotion from the thinking brain. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about following that initial sense and gut response to anything as small as a request for your time to, you know, about to step into an elevator with people that don't look very trustworthy and your gut saying, don't do it. So basically, uh, it, I 
learned how to start listening to my intuition and my gut on a daily basis and following that because it's actually, I believe it's a God-given design on choices that we need to make for ourselves that um, a lot of times if you're stuck in patterns like I was of people pleasing or helper and achiever patterns that we tend to override those voices coming from our, the voice, you know, coming from our gut, our intuition. So um, that's some of the biggest work I think that I've been doing with Mickle Therapy and learning how to find my words, how to speak my truth. Um, and, and it really does release a lot of, um, it, it actually brings energy because uh, as you make those choices, you're feeling better, you're creating a life that you love. And it's also about finding fulfillment, you know, finding out what you really do enjoy and then following that. I like to say follow the joy and follow inspiration. And I know that, you know, uh, especially it's really important to do during recovery. When you're trying to get your health back, just like those cancer patients were, when you're trying to get your life back, you need to do everything you can to insert joy and fulfillment into your life, I believe. So that's something that I've been on a mission to do. So anyway, that's a little bit about the emotional work and mind-body work that I've done in recovery. Take care, warriors, and always remember, life is not over. It's starting again.